Is there a piece of commercial or industrial equipment you've always wanted to own, not because you have some practical purpose to use it for, but just because you've never been allowed to get up close to one and see how it's made, how it works, and what it's like to use? For example, a fire alarm pull station, or a street light, or one of those two-way radios that makes that squawk noise when you key up the mic. That's why when I saw three of these receipt printers on the shelf at the thrift store, I couldn't resist buying one of them, even though I have no use at all for it. This is a Samsung Bixalon thermal receipt printer. It did come with the paper. It takes quite a bit of effort to pop it open, but there you can see the roll of thermal paper, which pops out quite easily because there's no spool holding it in place. That's the drop-in loading feature they advertise. Because, you know, once in a while you buy something or you make an order at a restaurant and when they go to print out your receipt, the printer is out of paper. So you see them take out the old empty roll and put it in the new roll of paper. So for the first time in my life, I can do that myself here. And tear off the excess and there we go. It's reloaded. And I did get it with the power supply. It's a 24 volt DC power supply. I didn't think these ran on such a high voltage. I've always wondered if these are parallel or serial, but this one is serial. I know some of the really new ones are USB, but this is an older model, obviously. You get an on off switch on the back, and that's where the power plugs in. There's the information sticker on the bottom Bixalon, I assume that's how you pronounce that. Samsung mini printers, thermal printer, model STP-103PG, 24 volts at 1 amp, center positive. Has a whole bunch of dip switches for configuring the baud rate of the serial port. You can set the density to dark or normal. Handshaking for the serial port, and you can select 24 or 32 characters per line. Although it says reserved, so I don't know if that works on this model and you can select English or Korean and there it was made in Korea and I checked those dip switch settings according to this chart and this one was configured for 9600 bits per second it's set to normal density X on X off handshaking 32 characters per line in English and it looks like nobody ever peeled off the protective film on this logo, although it's so old, I don't know if I'll be able to get it off in one piece. And this feels like a rather cheap label anyway. I mean, this one is just obviously a label stuck on the front, so I don't know if Samsung even makes these, or if they just stick their name on it. So for what it's worth, that's that protective film taken off. And now it's all sticky, so I probably should have just left that on. I have it plugged into power now, and even without it connected to a computer, we should be able to do some kind of test print on this. So I'll turn it on. And... Oh, I think you have to take it offline before you feed the paper. That doesn't literally mean online, as in on the internet. That just means on the line going to the computer that's telling it what to print. And when you take it offline, then it ignores whatever the computer is sending to it. So right now it's offline. That's why the power light is blinking. And we should be able to feed the paper. Yes, we are. I don't know if this can automatically cut the paper. A lot of these can, but this may be one of the cheaper models where you just have to yank on it like that. And then put it back online and now it's ready to print. But we should be able to do some kind of test print if we hold down one of these buttons while we turn it on. So hold down the feed button while I'll turn it on. And there it goes. That was... Oh, it's still, do, it's still doing a test print. Self-test printing. Please press paper feed button. Uh, so let's keep going. Completed. Okay. A little too early trying to yank that off. So there's the complete test print, STP-103, version 1.25. There's the settings it's set to. Parallel interface. So can this do parallel as well as serial? I don't know. 15K buffer. There are the dip switch settings. There's where I tried to tear it off. 
There's the complete ASCII character set, or at least part of it. It only goes up to O. And some of the special characters it can do. And completed. Now let me try holding out the online button while I turn it on. It's doing like a density test. And like a barcode. Ooh, I can actually feel it's warm coming out because this is a thermal printer, obviously. So it does use heat to print the paper. I could, but while I was holding my hand there, I could feel it warming up as it was printing. So there's the various densities. I don't know if that's because the print head is dirty or if this is just old paper. Could be either one. Now let's try hooking this up to a computer and see if we can print something on it. The dip switch is lied. This is not a serial printer, or at least it's not configured that way. Because I tried all these different cables and adapters connecting it to the serial port, and I could not get it to print anything, even when I had it set to the correct baud rate. But then I tried plugging it into the parallel port of this Tandy WP2, and now when I type the command to print, bingo, it prints. The line wrapping is all wrong, but it's clearly printing what I typed into the WP2. And you have to tear this off pretty quickly, otherwise you get a very ragged edge on it. So you have to really yank on it like, like that. And even that wasn't that great. Look at that. So, let's try that again. There we go. Now I have it connected to my ThinkPad X61, which is my newest PC that still has a parallel port. I'm sure it would work with a USB to parallel adapter, but the problem is most of these have a Centronix connector on them, which is obviously not going to work with this. It needs a DB25 connector. Bixelon still has the STP-103 listed on their website. They say the printer was discontinued in November 2011 and service and support for it was discontinued in November 2016. And they still have the driver for it. It's for Windows XP through Windows 10, both 32 and 64 bit. Now I'm installing the driver in Windows. So I'll choose LPT1. And the documentation that comes with it mentions that it will give you this error message that it has not passed Windows logo testing, but it tells you to just choose continue anyway. And you have to restart your computer. I don't know if it's actually recording in the video like that, but I'm seeing a pretty trippy moray pattern on my camera's viewfinder right now. Anyway, under printers and faxes, I now have Bixelon STP131. So I'll set that as my default printer. And let's try to do a test page. All right, that was the test page. That Windows logo doesn't look so hot, but what do you expect from a receipt printer? And here we go, let's see if this thing has a paper cutter in it. So I'll do receipt, partial cut. So now, is it going to cut the paper when I do the test page? Nope, it doesn't seem like it has a paper cutter. That's too bad. Now let me try printing a picture. It's a diagram of a keyboard layout. Hey, that's not too bad. Got kind of cut off at the top there, but it's readable. So there's the original image compared to the printout. So I did a pretty good job of printing out those colors in half tones. Obviously the resolution isn't very good, but for a receipt printer that's perfectly fine. So if you're a cashier, that's one way to amuse your co-workers. Misappropriate the company's receipt printers to print tiny, low-quality, black-and-white copies of risque photos. Who says there's nothing good on TV anymore? Here's a better look at the thermal print head, and that's the part that nobody ever cleans, so you often get receipts that have huge chunks of pixels missing and big streaks going down them because the print head is clogged up with dirt and nobody ever cleans it. 
There's one more trick you can do with thermal paper. Use a lighter to turn it black with the heat of the flame. You don't actually light it on fire, you just hold it close and you can see it starting to turn the paper black from the heat of the flame. And that's not from burning the paper. You can see it's still white on the other side, although it did singe it a little bit there. That's just the heat of the flame activating the thermal ink inside the paper. And acetone erases the thermal ink, so here's what happens when you dab some nail polish remover on it. So this video has pretty much come full circle. I finally got my hands on something I've always been curious about. But now that I have it, and I've tried it and it works, what am I going to use it for? Making fake receipts to return items I didn't buy? Gee, I don't know why the barcode isn't scanning. Can't you at least give me a store credit? And in case it wasn't obvious, 